I uh, once again welcome and thank you for joining me. Very early in church history, Christians started infighting. Pretty soon there were church splits as petty divisions broke out among believers. And it was pretty bad. James was the pastor of the first church in Jerusalem, and out of the gate, his letter to that early church addresses this serious issue. From James 4, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but don't have, so you kill. You covet, but you can't get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. What was at the heart of it? What what was the root cause for these early church quarrels and fights? In a word, jealousy. Satan has used that sin for centuries now to inflict harm in the church. A person becomes jealous of someone else's position in the church. Groups, committees, volunteers feel overlooked because they start thinking another group is getting special favors or attention. Poor become jealous of the rich. Rich, young become jealous of the old. Jealousy began to breed among racial heritage and family lines. Jealousy is a dangerous emotion. It can hijack your mind, ruin your relationships, destroy your family, and in extreme cases, even lead to murder. Jealousy instills anger, causing untold damage to a relationship and fueling everything from passive aggression to stalking domestic violence, obsessions out of control. Tragically, jealousy can be the very thing that drives away the person one most desires. Yet jealousy is a very old, very natural, and very human emotion. St. Augustine once observed, he who is without jealousy has never loved. Listen to this proverb from the Old Testament, from uh, Proverbs 27. Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Two shopkeepers were bitter, bitter rivals. Their stores were directly across the street from each other, and they would spend each day keeping track of each other's business. If one got a customer, he would smile and triumph over his rival. One night, an angel appeared to one of the shopkeepers in a dream and said, I'll give you anything you ask, but whatever you receive, your competitor will receive twice as much. Would you be rich? You can be very rich, but he will be twice as wealthy. Do you wish to live a long life and a healthy life? You can, but his life will be longer and healthier. What's your desire? The man frowned, thought for a moment, then he said, here's my request. Strike me blind in one eye. You've heard of the green-eyed monster of jealousy? Do you know where it comes from? It was a literary invention of William Shakespeare. The term green-eyed monster, meaning jealousy, first first appears in Shakespeare's Othello. When Lago says, Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. The Apostle Paul had to address that green-eyed monster in his New Testament letters from 2 Corinthians. For I am afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be, and you may not find me as you want me to be. I fear that there may be discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. And in Galatians 5, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. I recently came across a great article by Donna Wright entitled, Six Steps to Overcoming envy and jealousy. Number one, repent for agreeing with envy and jealousy and any other spirits that you recognize came along with it. Anger, rage, resentment, self-rejection, fear, self-pity, idolatry, control, dominance, dominance, etc. It all comes from wrong thinking. Secondly, 
forgive anyone whom you've harbored bitterness towards because of envy and jealousy. Whether they were the object of your envy and jealousy or they victimize you out of theirs. Third, choose to trust God. Get into his word and learn what his will and his ways look like. Look like and establish in your heart those, those things rather than these earthly things. Ask God to help you to take your thoughts captive. Pay attention to your thoughts and don't agree with any thoughts that don't line up with God's word, his will, and his ways. This will be a learning curve and something you'll have to grow into. Next, practice gratefulness and thankfulness toward God. Learn to pay attention to and recognize the blessings that he's already given you. Keep your focus on what is good and acceptable to him. Praise him, even when the enemy is raging in your ear and every temptation to fall back into those old patterns and thoughts. Praise God for his goodness and faithfulness to deliver you and recover you from the shadow of this sin and disease. In a couple of quotes I found about jealousy, I'd like to share with you. A flower never thinks of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. And then this, jealousy is a disease. Get well soon. And again, I'd like to ask you to join others in your church praying and fasting every Thursday, if it's three meals or just one meal, to fast and pray during that time for the church, for its leaders, for an end to this pandemic, and uh, that we'll be able to see ourselves wisely and God will safely bring us through this uh, tragic time. Thank you for joining me today. Let me pray. Father, thank you, thank you for those who are listening, those um, who are taking um, this opportunity to hear from you and your word. Would you bless them? And Lord, would you rescue your people from the dreaded sin of jealousy? Help us to be like-minded of one accord, to love one another as Christ has loved us. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day.